For our latest installment, we traveled to Texas to investigate a more industrial powered form of wave riding, commonly known as tanker surfing. We're high speed chasing her down! Woo -hoo -hoo. In this episode, we plan to explore what it means to be a tanker surfer. Yes, when big ships go by, there are people who hunt down the waves they create. Yeah! Look at that wave! Whoa, look at how many waves there are! We thought it would be good to start directly with the man who coined the phrase, tanker surfing itself, Captain James Fulbright. Yeah, bro. Does that look like it? Yeah, it does. It's about 40 feet, it's got 909 feet by 157 coming outbound. It's gonna be beautiful, and it'll probably get the point around around nine o'clock. Okay, roger that, bro. Good All, right. One, man. All right, cool, I'll holler at you. Holler right. at me later. Hello. Okay, brother, thank you, man, bye. Yeah, man, he's bringing a big gas ship right himself. So maybe he'll, he'll, he'll turn, crank it up a little for you. Oh, no, that never happens. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make that clear. <laughs> Meet James Fulbright and Peter Davis. You may recognize them both from the Galveston, Texas segment in Dana Brown's film, Step Into Liquid. James owns his own surf shop called Strictly Hardcore Surf Specialties. He also runs tankersurfcharters.com on the side, which is how I found him. His surf buddy Peter is the chief of Galveston Beach Patrol. Lucky for us, we're able to wrangle these two tanker titans for a day out on what they do best. Yeah, I think that we have in Texas like enough surf to make a surf community, but not enough to keep them happy. So it's really nice when it's flat up there to have another option. And it's flat a lot, so it's good to have it. I also just like, uh, I, I guess, the chance element in there. You know, like all these things have to come together to make a perfect day. Right wind, right boats, right tides, right weather. You know, everything has to be there. So we set off at first light. With our fingers crossed, it was a busy tanker day. Riding tanker waves sounds pretty straightforward. Wait for a big ship to go by and try to catch the wave it creates as it goes past. Problem is not every tanker creates a rideable wave. I learned this the hard way back in 2014 when myself, along with the brothers Marshall, met up with Morgan Faulkner and Porter Ansis to try and hunt down tankers as they made the narrow turn in Port A. We watched 20 tankers go by and only one ended up producing a wave that was a measly waist high. So this time around, I wanted to better understand what the magic ingredient was that made tanker waves break. <laughs> oh, I just saw a dolphin jump in front of the bow. Of like there. all the photos you see. Yeah, you'll, yes. you'll be surfing with the dolphins. They surf no the way. waves with us. What are you looking for in a ship? Is there a certain size, shape, anything like that? Yeah, that you obviously the bigger the ship, um, the better likelihood it's going to make a, a wave. So people always wonder, what are we riding the bow wave? Are we riding the stern wave? And, it's basically the wave that's generated from all the water that the ship has displaced getting caught up in the stern wave. So that's what makes it get bigger, because all this water is like trying to fill that hole back up that the ship is making as it's traversing up the channel. Okay, so bigger is clearly better, whether it's oil, gas, cargo, or anything else that might be passing through the channel. The width, length, weight, and speed of each ship is crucial. Similar to ferry surfing in Barrero from last season, except we're chasing down giant ships in a tic-tac sized boat down a 30 mile stretch as their waves end up breaking on shallow shoals. And on top of that, these waves go for miles. It's, this wave, it's kind of a fun, kind of crumbly wave, but when you start riding a fun, crumbly wave for miles, it suddenly becomes a whole new thing. It's, one wave for five miles is a whole surf trip worth of waves. I've never done crack cocaine, but it, I can imagine it would be that addictive, you know? <laughs> you gotta have another wave. Surfing's kinda like that anyway, but yeah. it's, 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 it's exacerbated here for whatever reason. <laughs> In fact, I see an outbound coming our way, so I think we ought to go ahead and go to the other side of the channel and Chew. position and anticipate a ride. The way up there? Yeah. Yeah, bro. Does that look like it? Yeah, it does. We got a big boy outbound. The boys seem to be pretty hyped. We're high speed chasing her down. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's starting it. to look like something. Woo! -hoo -hoo. Uh, yeah. Wow. Oh, cute. Pardon me. French. <laughs> look at that thing, man. That's gonna break. <laughs> Whoa, look at how many waves there are. Goodness. Yeah. Look at this thing! Woohoo! Yeah! Look at that wave! 
No way! Look at that thing! Oh. Wow! Whoop. So real quick, we learned ships that displace enough water make waves. So if you have two that pass each other in opposite directions, you get, you guessed it, a backwash. So here we are, about eight minutes into my first wave in Texas. So far, I've survived a backwash, did 300 cutbacks, and had two leg cramps. Leg crapper! Until finally, about three miles later, it ended. Oh my gosh, <laughs> my legs are dead. I just checked the clock, it was 10 minutes. 10 minutes. All righty. Good job, man, how was that? Wow, wow. that was insane. Oh, what's that, dude? That it never happens first wave to just be Telling a smoker. You, that was a really good wave. Or does it? <laughs> it does for you. <laughs> the wave was actually like insane quality. Yeah. Too, like the Especially wall was the huh? insane. Yeah, at the start. Yeah. There's a lot of cutbacks. So many cutbacks. <laughs> Probably a record amount of cutbacks. Expectations were already blown away. Within the first hour, we had already exceeded anything we had gotten on our last tanker surfing experience. I was not expecting there to be such a variety of waves or to get as many chances as we were getting. Here we go. Whoa. And after catching this wave with multiple sections coming at me, I definitely started to feel confident I could catch a few on my stroke board. As much as it may look like we're lucking into these conditions in tanker rides, this was all James. You can't just buy a boat, come out, and be a hero here. It's taken decades of mapping the channel banks in order to chase these ships down in a safe way. And James has it more dialed than anyone. So how that happened was I started snooping around at these crusty old bars that the, uh, <laughs> the shrimp boat captains would hang out after work and drink. Just one of those places that we looked like we didn't belong. But I found the gnarliest guy that I could find. I saw him like run up on us with a shrimp boat, like going like 15 miles an hour. He came to a screeching halt and just barely bumped the dock. Like perfect, perfect landing. And I said, I, that's, I need to talk to that guy. <laughs> and I asked the bartender, who, who is that guy? Oh, that shrimper dove. You don't want to mess with him. He, he's kind of honorary. So I, we sat there and like watched him and he walked behind the bar like he owned the place and grabbed this big gallon jug of what looked like moonshine and just came over to his table and just started drinking alone and mumbling after he'd been drinking and we had been drinking. I said, I'm going. I was like, I walked up and I said, excuse me, mind if I ask you a couple questions? He didn't say anything. I was like, well, uh, listen, we just, I just bought my first boat. I'm very concerned. I don't want to run aground. I don't want to be swamped. I heard that there's very dangerous places where waves break from ships, and I really need to know where not to go. And he didn't say anything, so I gave up. And as I walked away, he mumbled a number. And I was like, what did you say? And he mumbled the number again. I'm not going to say the number, but all I knew right then was the channel marker. And then I was like, oh, man, thank you so much. I'll stay away from there. And then he, mar he mumbled another number. And it was like a higher number, another channel marker. We thought we opened like another dimension in time, honestly. I mean, seriously, we went from riding a five to eight second wave to minutes, just like that. And it was just mind blowing. 
That's why I went and bought a boat immediately, went into debt just immediately. And that was, we were hooked from that point on. You can tell just how much James wholeheartedly loves tanker surfing through these stories. And not just the act of riding tanker waves itself, but the entire experience. Driving the boat, studying the shoals, the time spent between rides. Wow, it's so glassy right now. Oh my God, dude. And we could feel that every step of the way. This was James' happy place. Off camera, he shared a story with me about bringing his mom's ashes out here to his favorite sandbar. This one, in fact, that we were about to try and ride, which he appropriately named Mom's. And right before he dropped us off for this final glassy ride, he said, Mom's always throw something special at ya. And he was right. These moments are what this show is all about for me. Having James open up and share his mom's story right before catching this glassy dolphin ride will always give me chicken skin. Like most things in surfing, there's just an extra layer to these scenes. Because these people live for this stuff. What else can I say but, thanks mom. This is hitting the spot. Just got a hint of escargot. It'd be awesome for us if you guys want to just hang out, eat, and kind of reflect on so a couple waves, and then we'll, we'll eat afterwards. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll I guess I will. <laughs> you sounded really professional. It was your <laughs> actions that weren't. Wow, I just filmed that whole, that whole breakdown, dude. <laughs> oh, man. He's oh, helping up the last like one, day. Oh, day. Last day. Try to <laughs> Yum. Yeah, you can multitask. Who's going to film me eating? <laughs> this is part of it, man.